the uh, last GSL Coders Finals. Now we are talking about the Iron Squid Round 16, the second day, and we have our third best of five with MMA up versus Stefano. Our Terran player, he starts to the top right of the map. We have Grand Lagoon. Here we have him in the red. Former Slayers player, Optimacer. And at the bottom left of the map, we have with a barcode ID the French yeah. player. Now Stefano. we know his. Now we know his Smurf ID. I, can, yeah. I see it. I'm like, ah, uh, now I know. Yeah. I played against him three times. Ah, uh, yeah. Let's go. And he changed his race every. Time. Yeah, exactly. It was, it was crazy. But uh. So Grand Lagoon being a little bit of a bigger map here. I'm not quite sure what we can expect here from Stefano. Um, if this is a map where he's going to show us his build with the Roach One and a Hydra Den. This is, of course, something that uh, boggled the mind of so many people when he showed it at uh, yeah, Home Story Cup. But MMA, on the other hand, what does is, is he going to do? I feel this, especially with this map, we, we saw actually in the game with Parting in ST that ST was not really too comfortable going into a long game. Decided to go for a 7 pool, which worked. With Stefano, I feel, especially with the opening here, we're just going to see him go into a macro game. For relevancy's sake, uh, I'm actually much more excited about MMA's play than Stefano's because Stefano, you see him all the time, he plays in so many tournaments and he does really well and you know his style. MMA, on the other hand, the only tournaments I ever see him play in is actually just this one. And so whenever you get to see him play, it's a real treat because yeah, he's not as dominant as before, he's still good, but what's he going to show? What style are we going to see? Has he changed his style? Can he compete with Stefano who... I feel like he's getting better and better. You know, everyone talked about how much potential he had, but I think he's still even, he hasn't reached his limit yet. And now he's coming back to live in Korea for the first time where he stays here yeah. for a longer period. It's crazy to see him in the Kodas. I really, finally, I mean, he got- I never expected him to take it. <laughs> yeah, the, the reason is because he got offered so many Kodas uh, invites already, but then he always didn't accept them because he had tournaments in Europe that he had to attend, that he wanted to attend. And now finally, uh, he's in a position where he's like, okay, I want to go to Korea now. I want to stay a little bit longer than I did in the, the past, last few times. And I'm going to play in the GSL. I'm going to play in Codes. And I am so excited to see how he's going to do. That's going to be really, really interesting to me. He's like the foreigner that everyone was always talking about. Wait until Stefano is in Korea and plays Codes. And now it's his... It's his chance to just show everyone that it's justified. Yeah. And, you know, he is joining his teammate Huck in Kodas as well. And here is those those words. I was already surprised. Yeah, if that was Caspar, that was Pro League right now. <sighs> we would be in trouble. We would have to stand up and pause the game. Yeah, we would be like, man, you can't do that. Yeah. Well, I'm happy that... Double queen now, again, after the first two queens are out for uh, Stefano. We have him without gas. He's going into uh, the style that has been popular before the queen got a, a patch, but after the queen patch, it was kind of the standard that most Zerg players chose to go down when they were facing a Terran player. Yeah. And here comes the double gas, whereas MMA is now going into a third command center already. Yeah, and... MMA with this style is, is he's shown this a lot and it's something his former teammate Ryung did quite a bit as well and I'm not surprised by this so we'll see what he does going forward I think we could see Stefano do that same Roach Hydra style since that's kind of what he's doing right now and this match was played very recently yeah so I I would expect it I just want to point out again I don't know if you guys can hear this too, because we're obviously observing from a different computer. These birds on this map, they just have a lot to talk about. I think there's actually a somewhere where birds are watching this stream as birds commentating this somewhere. There's a big esports bird scene. They're all just chattering okay. about this. I feel like I've seen that jank here. No guy, not on drugs, no on coffee, no sleep abbreviated. No, it's just talking about the ambient sounds on this map. Yeah, there are birds on the ambient sounds on the map. <laughs> Uh, we have the Roach one. We have the Roach one here. And this doesn't, of course, necessarily mean that Stefano goes into this build. We also see in this matchup Roach warrants for players like Hyun. But the difference is that uh, Stefano is currently doing this without a speed upgrade at all. And, uh, well, we have already the tech for him. So with this composition, it looks like we are going to see the Hydra then too. 
Marines for MMA trying to take down the space at the yeah the third to the right side of the map and the Queens will be there in time. Should have enough energy for a transfuse or two and no, not just yeah, yet. Yeah, he needed like two more seconds. I find it a little bit weird MMA decided to take that trade though. That was not really the best. He could have run away. Yeah, he could have easily so, just escaped. He just killed one queen and lost five, five marines. marines so it, not a good trade. Yeah. Here comes this armor upgrade, and this is kind of one of those points where you can really see what uh, yeah what Stefano is gonna do. We have him with one evolution chamber, whereas he uh, played in a pro league. To, ah, there's the second one. Okay, didn't start the plus one attack upgrade just yet. I was already wondering why you only build one evolution chamber, but then I uh, saw on the map that we have two of them. Yep, there's two. But he changed it up. He changed his uh, his build a little bit. He went into the speed right now and goes into the spire, so we don't see the Hydra push. He instead just starts with a few roaches that give him an edge against Hellions in the early game, and also the opportunity to push, which he doesn't use because he knows about the wall. But we have him with a very dominant game in the mid game with Ling, Hydra. Uh, sorry, with Ling, Mutalisk, and uh, most likely also Mainlings. Yeah, I think we're just going to see a big attack at the third base if MMA ever tries to take it, which is so hard to do on this map. And does he know about the third base, actually? Does no. he see the third no, no, command no, no, center? Yeah, so he has no idea. He's just doing this based on what he stylistically thinks MMA is going to do. Yeah, the thing is, I talked about this double evolution chambers and that he started the plus one armor upgrade. I actually think that one of the reasons why we didn't see the plus one attack upgrade is because he did not decide yet what path he would go down to. If he would go down into a Ling, Muda, um, Ling, Muda and uh, Baneling, or if he would go for the Hydra then, um, in addition to the Roach one that he already had, and then he chose, okay, I'm gonna go for this build, I'm gonna go ex uh, I'm gonna go and execute it right now with a very dominant mid-game performance. Yeah. So uh, this shows a bit of flexibility that is really important. And it just shows that when you face Stefano, you can't just assume that he will go into a certain style just because he's recently shown him and uh, like to popularize it and is happy with it and uh, invented something new. This is actually a trap that, as an opponent, you can fall into so fast. You yeah. expect something to happen, you see a few of those telltale signs in the build and you immediately jump to conclusions, but then he chooses to go down a different path and suddenly you are sitting there with the wrong composition. Yeah, that's, that's so, certainly true. I feel like the matchup that's the most important in is Zerg versus Protoss, but uh, in this matchup as well, it can be something that you think about, especially when you're playing against someone who's so known for a style. Now, MA takes his third base that's to the right side of the map, which is not really normal for this map, especially considering that the the other base is a little bit further away from the Zerg. But MMA wants to do this because taking a base that's closer to your opponent in this matchup can oftentimes be good for you because you want to be able to attack your opponent and then fall back to defending your third a little bit easier. A fourth base for Stefano is also in the making, so Stefano is once again one base ahead. The upgrades, I really like how MMA is hitting them. He's already on his way to plus two, plus two. A bit of an attempt to force an engagement here at the Zalnaga Watchtower, and he's able to claim it, so now yeah. he has the better vision. He has a pretty decent supply lead for this stage of the game at, in this matchup. So to be ahead against a Zerg is pretty decent with that third command, so he's able to get an SCP count up, but this is something that Stefano is going to try to ruin right away, sending these Mews in. There's not a single turret MMA. May have misread Stefano's strategy. He needs to start better preparing, though, of course, for the rest of the Mutas. Yeah. Actually, moves one of the mutilists back that was with a rally towards the top yeah. right, heading right into he the range it. of the missile turret. And he saved it. He was able to get it away. A couple of harvesters have been killed. Six in total. Six SCV is dead. But here comes the push for MMA. Siege tank push with Marine Marauder support. Moving in at the third base now. Onto the creep. Sieging up already. You know, sieging up and the siege hits are good so far, but Sapano is about to have plus two carapace. It unfortunately does not finish for him during this fight. Oh wow, but that fight was just awesome. The thing about Stefano, and which he, which is also why he won this fight so dominantly, is that he has the best flank and flanks and sandwich. Yeah. He waits so long, he sets a trap, he sets the units in position, and his timings to arrive from multiple directions at the same time at the opponent's army is just perfect. Uh, he, he really approached that one well, and part of it comes to his creep spread. It's not a thick creep spread, but it's a fast one. It's almost Scarlet-like with how fast he's moving it forward. 
Uh, and the coverage of the creep can be reinforced at any moment that he wants to. He's got so many queens. <laughs> the mutilists are to the right side of them. I've just ran away from one marine. Seven mutilists running away from one marine, and then suddenly they're like, "Wait a sec, he's alone, guys. Let's team up. Let's team up on him. Let's make this unfair." You just, you just cheat, man. They're cheaters. Yeah. They are hit and run, guys. They're guerrilla warriors. Now we have them in the mineral line to the right side of the map, and as mentioned, as soon as they see trouble heading their way, they bounce back. Yeah, bounce right out of there. Very nicely done. And 20 more lings, of course, rallying out. He wants to, to hit this attack, I feel, at MMA's third base, but MMA's siege tank count is getting pretty high. He's also adding Mirage and his 3-3 three, three upgrades. He's a little bit behind on those. Could be stirring his plus 3 armor as well, but... He's hitting everything macro-wise pretty well, and I think he should be able to defend uh, if Stefano wants to commit heavily, and he starts Hive, I don't think he's actually going to commit to the attack. MMA s slipped a little bit with this macro at some points when he had to call down two extra supplies, but what he doesn't do is drop a lot of scans. He doesn't really throw the creep back. Now we have a few Marines heading out, and I think this is the time when he starts to scan ahead and try to take down the creep tumors. The hive tech for Stefan, of course, is important now, and yes, there's the scan. Reveals a lot of creep tumors and goes for it immediately. He knows that he has to be careful here. The deeper he penetrates onto the creep, the higher the chances that Stefano goes for a surround. And with the mutilists on the map, you can't just simply pick up the marines and just move back with those medivacs. Yeah. You need to make sure that you are off creep before your opponent arrives and attacks. Yeah, you need to be off the creep because with this many mutas, there's no pickup. It's not going to happen. If Stefano sees you doing it, he's going to shut you down. Hive is finishing, and I think that we are going to see Greater Spire. He already has plus two for his air units. He could switch to Ultras, though, on this map. I think that would be a good choice as well. With the with the plus two that we have now for the Mutalist, it would make sense to go into the Greater yeah. Spire so that also the late game units will just be able to capitalize Take on those upgrades, upgrades, for sure. So right now he is going for Pathogen Glands. We still have... Both of them uh, just sitting tight here. Makes now a great Aspire upgrade has been started as expected. And uh, well, where is actually, where are those spine crawlers? Uh, is he trying to save his great Aspire with those? Uh, no. Yeah, well, it's not really exposed. Getting there with it's a medivac. At the, at the natural, getting there with a medivac would be very, very With difficult. this crease spread on this map, it's basically impossible. He would no. never even know where it is to try to go hunt it. Adrenal glands, plus three, plus three. All these upgrades are now started for Stefan. MMA will complete his last set of upgrades first. Yeah. And as look at this unit, really nicely. A small attack to the left to take down Spine Corner number one and number two. And now Bongo. the first uh, Infestor coming in. He will clean this up with Lings, but some damage done here by MMA. And Creep also forced back. This is exactly what MMA wants to do now. He is maxed out on three bases, trying to get a fourth base. And at this point, you really uh, start to just force the Zerg back. You have, suddenly have your upgrades. You have plus three, plus three, and the medivac support, so you feel a lot more confident going into a fight. Yeah, and so far so good with the creep spike clear up job. He's already been able to push part of it back on the right side of the map. Problem for MMA is that even pushing this creep back is not going to be enough. He really needs to take a good engagement because the later the map goes, I feel like the better for the Zerg on this map because they're there's so many bases on this map, and they're so easy for a Zerg to take when he has that swarm army. Whereas MMA, on the other hand, might struggle a little bit. It's hard for him to drop. It's hard for him to start taking these bases out. And then already, Stefano has started to make a bank. He's got 3,000 minerals, 400 yeah. uh, resources, and then, of course, 1,300 gas. So he will soon go for an attack. He needs to yeah. start trading units and freeing up supply. He's heading into plus 3, plus 3, and the third attack upgrade for his uh, greater Spire units, too. For the Brood Lords and the Needleless, and here comes the attack. Planetary finishes just in time for only Lings, but he doesn't have enough SCVs to repair. He has Adrenal Glands, and the damage output is crazy. He's moving in at the right side of the map, and the Veilings trying to take MMA spaces down now. Freeze up the supply that he needs to go into the Brood Lords. They are already morphing while he's still attacking. His macro is definitely working well for him. Yeah. 3-3 three, three gonna finish, though very soon that's going to make his units even stronger this is what i was talking about for mma it's so hard for him to actually hold on to these bases when he goes to the late game the zerg's all over him he's not going to be able to keep that planetary up to the top left anymore he's not going to be able to mine from his third base on the right side of the map unfortunately for him Stefano's bank is getting better and better and he is 
he struggles to assault this position. He comes in now, but Zafano gets some good fungals on this extremely marine heavy army. He should be fine. Yeah, and to the left side now, an attempt of MMA to siege up, trying to take down this fourth base. Stefano is really low on drones. He's just at 60, 64. This is pretty cool for him with the saturation that he has. He's making this work and he has the bank, so now he has a lot of army supply that he can use moving in to meet this onslaught of MMA and the Terran player, even though he can kill a fair amount of units, just doesn't have anything to deal with those Broodlords. Yep. Way too few units for MMA and the Marines are pushed back. Now he's in trouble because he's still barely mining from his third. His fourth base is gone and he's going to lose all of his siege here. He can't pick up into the medevacs. There's too many corruptors. Here come those Banleys. He gets one fungal. This game may just end. The bottom right, we have another drop attempt by MMA trying to Tries to score at least the numbers, but this is not really working for him. The queen, that's the one of the units that he was able to kill, but the rest is still struggling. Top left, Stefano for now retreats, but still has the bank available, and MMA is down to 130 supply without any minerals left. He has those bases, he has those command centers, but he can't really use them. Yeah. The crease for Stefano is insane. Look at it at the bottom right of the map, he pushed it all the way out to the edge as far as it could go just to make sure you could see every single drop that might try to go around there. His burrow upgrade is now completed. He can even make sure that those additional bases have trouble landing with Zerglings being burrowed. Stefano, he so still So has... drone light. Less yeah. than 60 at a 23 minute game. Yeah, which is pretty awesome for him because this means a lot of army supply. If he maxes out again, yeah, that's what he does. He already has the bank, so it's not like he's starving for money right now. The actually, the uh, saturation for him is really good. Yeah. He's just not going for a 20 drone saturation on the minerals. He's going <laughs> for 16, and that's pretty awesome for him. He's mining from MMA's command center over here. Stealing minerals. What a thief. And he actually forces a lift on that command center. Now his Broodlords are zoning again. MMA is in a lot of trouble. He's trying to switch into Ravens so that he can take some secret missile shots. But unfortunately for him, I just don't see that working out. That's his only hope, that's his only chance, but he's now long just mining from two of his bases, and now his command center to the bottom right is blocked by a hatchery of all things. I would have expected to also see a few Vikings, maybe in addition with the point defense drones that are available from the Ravens. Yeah. The command center is gone. The problem for MMA, which I feel is also why he doesn't do it, is that he just does not have the He doesn't resources. have the money. He's trying to be as cost efficient as possible. Yeah. You know, he's like, well, if I get all my Ravens, if I only have four or five of them, they get fungal, they die, I just lose. But I don't have the money to make 12 Vikings right now, so this is what I have to do. Yep. Notice that he's low on minerals, but high on gas. That's exactly the situation you want to be in when you're making Ravens. He's starving for minerals. Bottom left, another drop attempt, but those Marines are not going to do too much. They're trying to fight those corruptors. Yeah. But one Baneling rolling in, that was a hero Baneling, but it did not kill all of them. But you the should just fight with the drones them. and use Contaminate so the drones can fight. Uh oh, there's a queen? Nah. No. No. Close, though. Nearly dying, but, but still survive. You know, MMA is starting to run out of patches over here. That top left base is the most saturated base is going to have, and it's with that many SCVs and also the mules, he's not going to last very long with money there. He's already down constantly to less than 300 minerals, and Safal, on the other hand, still banking 1300 gas. That seems to be the number he likes to hover around. As soon as he hits that, he starts to attack and trade again. And we have him with one armor upgrade for his air units. He's just way too much. We have a double drop now. Bottom and at the right side of the map, so MMA really trying to utilize the Medivax to make something happen here. And he knows that he has to draw Stefano first of all out of position, and second of all, delay his attack. With all the minerals he's gaining from the newly landed mules at the top left, he's been able to make those Vikings, at least some of them. But it's not going to last forever, and he's still not caught up. It's 15 now, to I think he's going to have how many Vikings until 3? Plus 5, that'll be 8. 15 Corruptors, and uh, they are on plus 3 attack and plus 1 armor. He has to lift his base. He knows he can't hold it. He's way out of here. Yeah. He's, he isn't even trying. Yeah. He knows exactly that there's no chance for him to hold it at this point. The income right now is about it's hovering around 800 to 1,000 for Stefano per minute. MMA, on the other hand, right now is less than 400, and that's, of course, even uh, with all the mules he can drop. They're on cooldown right now. 
Stefano doesn't max out. He has the lava and he has the resources, but he does not really max out in army. He is uh, building up a few banelings against those marines. Here comes the Thor, but Stefano is still having fighting with the army that he has here. Going to use those, yeah, going to use those food lords and MMA. He can't really engage, as already mentioned earlier. He, so far, he does not have the Viking numbers. Yeah. And he, here comes the additional Broodlords. He got lucky in that fight, actually, that he could catch some of those Broodlords with his Marines. If MMA had bought Stefano in a better position for Stefano, if he were better prepared with his investors nearby, then MMA would have gotten crushed there. He cannot fight this army straight up. He needs to get a good angle somehow, or he needs more time to get the rest of those Vikings out. In fact, right now, he only has nine Vikings. That's not enough. And he's actually going to have to throw some units away if he wants to make more because he's maxed out. And he, he actually throws SCPs. Yeah. He took the base at the top left again. And uh, Stefano will see this. He already has Zerklings <laughs> just looking for another base. And he will see that there is an attempt. Well, those SCPs. Oh, there are wow. Make it. But the thing is, he's, he has way too many. Yeah, he needs all. to get rid of them anyways. Well, maybe not. Yeah. Not that many, but still, I mean, it's a catch-22. Right side of the map, another base goes down for Stefano. MMA is oh. Oh. oh, eight hit points. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> eight hit points left on the hatch. Can go for the transfuse now if he wants, needs to. Uh, if not, then MMA is just gonna send another tag in there. But Zergling suddenly at the natural, taking down supply depots. It's not gonna take long until the MMA is gonna be supply blocked. He even has to. Yeah, he even has to retreat now at this position. And Stefano is just just decided at this time to just crush down with on, his entire force onto MMA spaces. Yep. Bungles go down on the SCVs. The MMA's orbital is, coin is destroyed. MMA is down workers, but so is Stefano. Stefano is very worker light at 45. He lost a lot of his, his mining and a lot of his hatchery, so he can't afford to be as cost inefficient as he once was, yeah, but he, he still has the much better composition. He has the perfect composition, and he has those upgrades. That's a big issue. We have how many Corruptors? 18 against 12 Vikings, and those Vikings are on plus one armor. If one of those Corruptors sees the Viking, he's probably just gonna die from laughter. He's like, what? <laughs> plus one attack? That's all that you've got? Dude, I have plus three attack and plus two armor. What you gonna do? He's like, Tickle me? Yeah, he's like, you're years behind, man. It's Those like you're still using a flip phone. The Ravens, on the other hand, six Ravens, that's roughly the number that you want. Six Ravens is that's where things get interesting, where you can go for those not only point defense drones, but also for the Sika missiles. And with this patch that we have, you don't need an upgrade anymore, so you can go straight at them. That's true. But the armor upgrades. Spawn still has to be careful here, but MMA needs the perfect engagement. This is his last stand, this is his last chance. Oh, he bungles kills. them. They do send a secret missile off, but it's a bit too late. Yeah, and they are all dead. All of the Ravens are gone. The Marines are all that's left. A few Vikings to support buffer. them. But fungal after fungal hits home. Stefano still with the bank. MMA Def finally has a bank too, but it's a bit too late as yeah. he loses his entire army. He's gonna get crushed here. He doesn't have the production to use his bank right now, and he loses his base. And not only will he lose this one, but Spano will easily go over and take out his base to the top left as well. Spano is going to take an early lead in the best of five. GG. GG. Game over. And Stefano with a 1-0 lead against MMA.